context and data flow diagrams sample 2 uber now what we're going to do this time is look at uber in both diagramic forms of a context diagram and a data flow diagram and as we try to illustrate in our last sample sometimes planning your context diagram first helps illustrate how our data flow diagram is going to go so it's good to plan it simple first and then build upon it in our data flow diagram okay and also we want to highlight the different features of both types of diagrams as well so let's look at uber first in the context of a context diagram start off the way we start every context diagram our big circle in the middle that identifies the name of the system okay and always in an exam situation virtually the name of the system and write information system underneath to highlight that is the information system so we're looking at the uber information system here now who are an external entities well the first one would be the uber customer okay and the uber customer is someone that wants to basically get an uber a, a type of car or taxi to come to their house okay pick them up and take them to a destination so what type of data do they need to give this system well they need to firstly set up an account okay and that account will have their details such as their name their address okay their phone number okay and probably financial details too and as we've got down there payment info okay depending on where they are when they order an uber a pickup location will be found and that pickup location is usually found through a GPS okay global positioning system so if the person is at home okay based on them ordering an uber on their phone it knows that they're at home or if they're in another part of town okay the location is identified once again through the GPS so uber already knows where you are and they like you to have your locational devices you know turned on so they can know this and that's obviously for verification so you're not pranking an uber or not corrupting the system they want to know where you are okay so it's a good system they've got set up okay the customer also needs to say what destination they need to go to okay and that's how they calculate how much the ride's going to cost and with uber it's paid in advance okay so basically based on the pickup destination location and the destination that's how we're going to be calculating the cost for this user okay and then finally uber also allows them to select what car type they want if they want something a bit more classy or with more seats okay those options are available so that all needs to go into the system first on the other side of it we have our uber driver and they also need to enter data into the system for the system to work so they have their own type of account details they need to say their type of car that way they can be requested if a user wants a special type of car their location is also picked up by gps as well as we're requiring their payment info so they can be paid okay and they have the ability to accept and decline okay requests and that might be they might be off shift or not working at the moment okay or they could have a whole variety of different jobs coming through okay so that might be a certain type of boolean that allows them to select whether or not they're going to take a trip for an uber customer now what data is going into this system well if the uber customers entered all this into the system okay we need the driver to obviously respond first so what would be happening here is they need to get the information from the uber customer so they need to receive the pickup location and the journey destination and then based on that they'd accept or decline the actual job and if they accept the job straight away payment takes place and the customer's crest is processed they are given an actual fee okay and that payment is commenced before the actual uh, journey takes place and obviously once again this is another area that uber's excelled because it's one fixed rate okay it may have a bit of variables associated with it okay but yeah it's not like a taxi that goes off track you know and then charges the customer a, an unknown amount at the beginning of the trip okay the people know the, fa the amount straight away so once that is calculated then okay confirmation is set back to the customer the driver location through the map system within uber is highlighted so they can follow the driver come to their house and they know how far away from their pickup location they are okay and then that's all that happens before the trip once the driver gets there they take them on the trip okay and they get them to their destination the customer then rates the driver and by rating the driver that obviously improves okay uber's customer service Okay, because all drivers want a good rating because it means they get more rides in future and often more rides in future. Okay, the transaction is finally takes place and the movement of money occurs. Okay, and then this happens through the bank. So the driver gets paid. Okay, the payment is received from the customer and the bank then sends back the receipts to go both ways. Okay, into the system. The customer gets the receipt saying their payment has occurred and the Uber driver gets a receipt. Okay, a payment receipt saying they've been paid. All right, so that's the context of how this system works. So now let's look at it from the point of a data flow diagram. Okay, and with the data flow diagram, it's always good to start off with our external entities. 
Okay, so our first external entity, once again, is the Uber customer. They need to first log into this system. Okay, and these details will be checked against a customer database. Okay, and once verified, confirmed, they're in. The Uber drivers need to do the same process, but I believe that there'd be a separate database set up for drivers due to the fact we're storing different information about the drivers, we're sorting information about their cars, what locations they work, things like that. So I actually reckon there'd be two separate databases in this and we'll be using some sort of relational model here. Once they're logged in, we go through the processes of establishing, setting up our drive. Okay, and the first one would be, what is the customer location? And we retrieve that using the GPS technology. Once we've got their location, we need to know their destination. Once we know their destination, okay, we can calculate the cost of how much we believe their trip is going to cost them. Okay, with those two costs in place, okay, we then post the journey to available drivers and we need to find an available driver. Now, this is done through the GPS, but also we need to search the driver database to know, do they work this region? Are they within this region? Okay, so that would be okay, within the driver database as well, I believe. Okay, a driver then is selected okay, and they accept and then payment occurs. Okay, so this all happens and the customer first pays now. So what occurs is the payment to driver and basically the payment from customers. Okay, that all takes place. Payment receipts are set back. The payment part is all over. Okay, the ride then occurs and then gets completed. At the end of the ride, okay, the customer has the ability to rate the driver. Okay, and as mentioned before, drivers want to get a good rating because then it means in future they'll be posted, okay, more potential uh, trips, okay, and have the ability to make more money through Uber, okay, but that rating would then have to be recorded in the driver database, okay, and the averages would be kept there, and it's a five-star rating system, and they really want to be above 4.5 so that they keep getting Uber journeys posted to them, okay, and have a successful Uber career. So I hope this video has given you a better understanding of how Uber works and basically how it can be displayed in both context and data flow diagrams. Okay, it's quite an interesting system where, you know, um, we have customers and, you know, drivers, okay, working together through a system, yet technically not part of the actual Uber organization where they're all like, they are external entities, okay, both interacting through the use of this system, okay, and both benefiting from, benefiting from this system, but there's a big focus on customer service here, okay, based on that rating system, so Uber drivers want to be the best they can be in order to get the most out of this system, so hope you enjoyed the video.